Hi, Dr. Grant. TRT cream is becoming increasingly more accepted. I would like to hear everything you know about the cream. So that's probably a lot. <laughs> what, what percentage of men do well on compounded cream? Maybe let's start with that. Um, I mean, I don't know in general. All I can tell you is my own experience as far as who, do, who does well. Um, I will say the majority of men that I get on cream stay on cream. Uh, I have a lot of guys that switch from injections to cream and I would say the majority, so greater than 50% stick with the cream. Some go back to injections just because not either it didn't, didn't absorb well for them. Honestly, that's rare. I would say it's more of a uh, convenience factor. Some guys just prefer not having to apply something every day or twice a day and that's fine. Um, but as far as the, uh, efficacy, if you, if you source it properly, know your compounding pharmacy, trust their product, know that you've had good experience with it, you know, consistently over time, uh, make sure it's the right base. And sometimes you get to pl uh, play with that stuff, but it works really well for most people. And I, and I can just tell you anecdotally speaking and personally that um, it was a game changer for me, um, you know, as far as how I felt and the mental, the mental clarity side of things was what really changed and, you know, Eric Serrano mentioned that we were at Silverback Summit back in November with Allie. And even he had mentioned on stage up there that his patients on cream just they just feel better mentally. They just have less brain fog. And I, I can 100 percent attest to that. Is that true across the board? No. But I don't think this this fear people have that, oh, it's topical. It must not be as good. They think that just because you're injecting something in the body that it makes it better. Um, that may be true as far as just getting a blood level um but all things being equal if you absorb cream well you it's really just personal preference and and or efficacy you know some guys just feel better with the cream so i can't tell you everything about cream as far as like how are they sourcing it and what are they doing as far as truly making it i, I haven't i haven't watched a compounding pharmacy put it together um i just know that they've come up with ways to do it that seem to absorb pretty remarkably well actually i've been pretty impressed with it um mm -hmm. and, and it's the same for females right like they've got all these different bases now um certain bases that, are, that go better like on the vaginal mucosa that wouldn't go well on just the normal skin and then other bases that seem to go anywhere you can do fine mm -hmm. and so it really is trial and error i usually use a trevis base but also hrt base or hrt heavy base i like a lot uh some guys prefer versa i kind of go with a Trevis first off, and then if that doesn't seem to work well, or if they get a skin rash or something like that, we'll switch to HRT base. Mm -hmm. um, my wife for females uses what's called the Elage base. It's more of a, um, it's a thinner, it's not really even as cream, it's almost like a lotion. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, cream in general, um, it's just, it's becoming more accepted because it works well. I saw a TRT clinic or some, an owner of a TRT clinic, T clinic the other day on Instagram, posting something about injections and these are the best way to do TRT. And it's like that, that's like saying vanilla is the best flavor of ice cream. Mm. It just doesn't, it's, it's subjective. Um, and, or it's, we'll say it's objective in a way, but also subjective for the individual. Um, everybody's different. So I think I tell my guys, you kind of, if you're on the fence about it, try it. If you, if you can get it, if you, if you trust your provider, they know where to source it. I, I think you owe it to yourself. If you're not feeling great, um, you kind of owe it to yourself to at least try it, like mark it off the list if it doesn't work for you. But that's what I tell my guys. Mm -hmm. New patients that come to me, if they've never taken testosterone, I try to kind of steer them to cream first because it's a lot of them don't want to mess with learning injections. And I'm like, if the cream works well for you, you'll probably stay with it. If it doesn't, again, that's good because we know, hey, it just didn't work well for you. Let's mark it off the list and let's play with the injection side of things. So, but um, anyway, I hope that's kind of a vague answer as far as tell me everything you know about cream. But in general, I will say, and as far as a few, and I know there's controversial people disagree with this, but I do not see the elevations in hemoglobin hematocrit on cream like we do on injections. It just doesn't, doesn't tend to happen. Um, do I think anything of that? Not really. I think it's interesting. I'm, I don't, I don't tell guys to donate, you know, even if they're on injections, if they're running high per se, that's, so it's not like I think hematocrit is a problem, but I do find it fascinating that we're not seeing you know, those issues with guys on, um, sorry, I think it broke up for a minute. I, I think it's fascinating. We're not seeing the, the hematocrit issues on the cream and it makes me think there's something in the injectable 
other than the testosterone that's causing that, whether it's the injection of the oil or preservatives, something that stimulates that red blood cell production more than a cream would. So it's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Another question he said, uh, are certain compounding pharmacies more reliable than others or are they all fairly competent? Well, it's all over the board, man. Like you, it's so frustrating. You would think, oh, I'll just go to my local compounder and, and get it made and it'll be, and that's not how it works. You got, they've got to, just like anywhere else, they have to take seriously what they do, enjoy what they do, uh, do it right, do it well. And not all of them do. And I had issues with guys who've used small compounders before and like their first set of labs are great. And then a couple months go by and they start, you know, they're like, doc, I don't feel good this month. I feel like there's, I'm not on my testosterone anymore. I'm like, well, let's check some blood work. And um, we check it and their levels are three, 400. Um, and I'm like, you know, did you put your cream on? Did you do everything the same? Yep, sure did. And I've had that happen enough. So I'll switch them to like MedQuest, which is a mega compounding pharmacy out of Utah. And then we never have that issue again. So it is kind of interesting. And so I tend to go with MedQuest unless somebody has a preference and they just want to try local um, because I just never know, you know, and I'm like, if you're going to try, <clears throat> do it with the best possible route that you can with the most re reputable pharmacy, at least at first. Once they kind of dial in on their cream, if they want to try a smaller compounder to compare, go for it. But uh, a lot of them are pretty happy with the the bigger brand and it's the same price. Honestly, they're very affordable either way. So, um, but yeah, there's, they're all over the map. I can't remember. I think it was four or five years ago. Maybe it may have been Keith Nichols that talked about a study done, I think on compounders in Canada and mm -hmm. they were testing different amounts of testosterone. I think it was testosterone in cream and it was all over the map as far as some were like 0%. I mean, it's just, how does that, this just means they didn't actually get it in solution or whatever. Like it just completely crashed. Um, and that's the other thing you don't want. There, I've noticed some compounding pharmacies will say they can do up to a 30% strength cream. I would probably stick with 20 or less. Uh, I think yeah. you're, you're playing with fire, getting up into that 30 range or more where it may just may just crash and you don't get anything out of it. So mm. um, how long should one wait before adjusting the protocol with cream? Because um, the results are more rapid than with injections. They are. They're quicker. I usually tell guys, honestly, at first, when it's when you're first starting testosterone, I still like them to give. I, I check blood work at a month to make just to make sure they're not wasting their money on it. Um, if their numbers are, quote unquote, good at that four week mark, I usually tell them, hey, either write it out where you're at or if you want to add a click, do that. And then after they, and once they do that, once they start adjusting, I think usually with a couple, two to three weeks, they can kind of tell on the cream what's happening. Um, it, in, in fact, some guys know within a day or two, honestly, it's that potent um, because there's no ester attached, right? They're not waiting for this whole time release. And I know theoretically, once your blood levels are a certain amount with injections, you should still notice those differences, but it just doesn't seem to work like that. I mean, and everybody's different. Some guys swear they can feel even injections on one day. You know, but in general, I do tend to say don't spend as much time waiting it out on the cream as I would somebody on injections, you know, three mm -hmm. to four weeks on cream versus six to eight weeks on an injection protocol. Let's just say. Yeah. The typical worry people also have is, uh, is it possible for DHT to get too high with creams? Again, we're back into that whole, what is, how do you test that? Right. Because DHT serum levels are going to be the same issue as you have with estradiol levels where, are you getting an accurate reflection of overall DHT production um, or at the tissue level? You don't know. You don't know in what tissue is it high and what tissue is it low. Getting just a snapshot of serum levels doesn't actually tell you what's going on at the tissue level. So that's where I get a little it's like I hear all this stuff about, oh, yeah, cream converts more to DHT. I, I haven't ever looked into that because I don't care about the serum and DHT levels. So I'm not really going to. Go off that. I don't know if anybody's ever done a study on that, looking at that. I think it doesn't matter. Here, here's the thing. Whatever the story is, you know, people always do this. They confuse their effects with the story underneath. So if you feel worse when you go up in your dose on cream, it doesn't matter if that feeling worse was from DHT or increased free testosterone or whatever. Drop your dose back down to see if you can feel better. You know, uh, this idea that we need to start, quote unquote, balancing these other hormones 
the body is the best at balancing. It knows what it's doing. That's that's how it's made, especially when it's when we're talking about conversion processes that we can't even really measure uh, that we just think are going on. And so it's like, just be careful with getting into those rabbit trails of thought with worried about DHT or worried about estradiol or that it's like big picture dose response adjust based on symptoms, like stay out of the weeds with constantly worried about the lab stuff. That's my own personal opinion on that. 